The trouble with midlife is the fear that this is as good as it gets and that it's all downhill from here. Some respond by giving up on themselves and just coasting. Others forget to take chances on new people or to imagine an exciting future. For a few, it's daring to dream again. And so, with six other people I barely knew, I chose a snow-capped mountain way above the clouds, a place the locals call impossible for the bird. We arrived in Moshi, Tanzania, on the lower slopes of Kilimanjaro, a couple of days before our trek up the mountain. A Kilimanjaro uh, is a beautiful mountain. Many people come from different countries, from America, Canada, Europe. At almost 1,000 meters above sea level, Moshi is an ideal base to acclimatize for the higher altitude ahead. Since my teammates came from three different cities in Canada, this was the first time we met as a group with Pooja, the owner of our trekking operator. No one can venture on the mountain without guides. And Pooja cherry-picked ours since she knew they could make the difference between success and failure and making it back safe or not. I think the Kili Clan guides are not, they're pretty standardized in terms of personality and because they're quite strict. They have to be pretty on the, the beat, on the road. They have to get accreditation. They have to have a certain number of times. They have to have a certain number of hours on the mountain. Um, for, again, security and the first aid part is very important as well. That's a whole other course. So, yeah, there's quite a lot. Yeah, my name is Isaac. I'm the guide of this group. Isaac is an experienced guide who's been up Kilimanjaro over 200 times over the last 15 years. Everest, our assistant guide, has gone up the mountain more than 100 times. It's his ninth year on the job. With a name like Everest, he considered Kili his baby. My name is Mtemi. Mtemi was the extra guide I hired to carry my camera and equipment when I was not filming. We were also accompanied by 21 porters. The hard-working porters are responsible for carrying all our equipment and setting up camp. They are indispensable to trekkers who want to avoid altitude sickness, which is often the result of overexertion. We also had our chief cook, Papa Benedict. His cooking would fuel our ascent. Kilimanjaro is Africa's highest mountain. Of the 35,000 people who attempted summit every year, 40% never come anywhere close. Based on these odds, three of our group of seven would not make it all the way up. My cousin Nabil, a 41-year-old engineer whose passion for scuba diving has taken him halfway around the world. He's here for a different kind of challenge, one that he hopes will not require an oxygen tank. Alan, at 44, is a successful business owner, a high achiever, living life in the fast forward lane. To, uh, to achieve... Uh... Call he called this midlife, midlife experience. experience a time out for him. It's been in my head for a couple of years. And I think it's also an inner soul experience to see if I, I can live, if I'm able to live in the now and be able to, to achieve the summit with that thought in my mind. 
There was something else Alan was determined to accomplish, a fear he wanted to overcome, but would not say more. Salma, a 30-year-old manager for a government agency in the healthcare sector, is the youngest of the group and the only woman among a more than two dozen man crew and team of climbers. Though she's a veteran traveler, this trip held a special meaning for her. When I was reading up about uh, Kilimanjaro, I was told that the people, people who have done this climb have experienced a closer sense to God. So I kind of wanted to see if that would happen with me too. Karim is 52 and an investment executive with a major bank. Returning to his native Tanzania for the first time in 30 years and trekking up the legendary mountain were two dreams, 10 years in the making for him. And here we are, looking really forward to conquering this beautiful mountain and going back to my roots, Dar es Salaam, to, to see some of my old childhood friends. Yeah, I had a dream that we'd finished the night. <laughs> I was celebrating my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> William is 41, a friend of Karim, and also an executive investment banker. He told his nine-year-old son that he was going up the tallest freestanding mountain in the world, convinced he could do it despite the extra weight he was unable to shed before leaving home. Yenin, Karim's cousin, is a 32-year-old native of Tanzania, now living in Canada. A telecommunications engineer his journey on Kilimanjaro was a way for him to set the record straight. I am in Kilimanjaro because having been from Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and going back to Canada to study and to work, I've seen people out there who talk about Kilimanjaro and appreciate the beauty and the environment out here. It doesn't seem right that I haven't done it when people who are not from here have actually done it and hope to make it to the summit and go back to Canada and proudly say that yes, I am from Tanzania and I have climbed Kilimanjaro. We all had our reasons for wanting to climb this legendary snow-capped mountain. Mine, at 50, was to have an adventure and realize a childhood dream of capturing it all on film. We were all here for different reasons. But one goal united us, making it to the top of Kilimanjaro as a team and against the odds. Jet lag and sheer anticipation kept us from getting much sleep the night before. And we felt like kids heading off on vacation. Yeah, you stick around. The drive from Moshi to the Machami Gate, where we were to begin our trek, lasts a couple of hours. Every time I saw the mountain grow closer, my heart would skip a beat from excitement and apprehension. Will we make it all the way up there? But as they say in Swahili, Akuna Matata. No worries. Our journey on the Machame route, the most scenic on Kilimanjaro, begins on the southwestern side of the mountain amidst the rainforest. Entering the rainforest felt like entering a place of worship. The rainforest receives 2,000 millimeters of rain a year. It is the first of six ecosystems on Kilimanjaro. In the next seven days, we will trek through heath, moorland and high deserts, all the way to arctic conditions at the summit. To experience these different ecosystems, 
would require walking from the equator to the North Pole, a distance of over 10,000 kilometers. On Kili, one can achieve this trekking a distance of less than 40 kilometers. Behind the apparent stillness of the rainforest lies a busy wildlife, teeming with sunbirds, hornbills, and blue monkeys. But the 30,000 people that come through every year keep them, for the most part, in hiding. It's beautiful here, lots of pretty flowers. I missed my monkey shot. I missed my monkey shot. I'm not happy about that. So far, so good. And uh, today we are now starting to walk on the mountain forest and it's, the camp is 3,000 meters. No worries. Come on, Henry, you're falling behind. We hadn't begun the serious climbing yet and already I was having a tough time keeping up with the group. This did not bode very well for someone who wanted to produce a documentary film for midlifers like myself. Called the begonia, begonia, begonia mayer. It's a climber plant, and they have a very good smell. If you smell, they smell like a roses. If you smell it. Okay, this is our first lunch. This carrot sandwich, banana, muffin, orange, and we're all very anxious to come into this tent to get a break from the from the rain. Oh, there's missing someone. Good three hour. There's missing here. Well, breaking bread on the mountain for the first time was exhilarating, even though we were at less than 2,500 meters in altitude. It felt like we had already achieved something important. Hey, Baba. Babu. He's having a massage. <laughs> Nabil! Babu. <laughs> 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 As we arrived at our first camp, the porters had already unloaded our gear and put up our tents. With the 11 kilometers we'd logged, we were famished. Papa Benedict, our chief cook, was already getting our dinner ready. The menu is rich in vegetables and carbohydrates, known to alleviate altitude symptoms. Our first dinner on the mountain far from home, and our loved ones, brought this first day to a close. Well, this feels good. This feels like paradise. As the night fell upon us with a deafening silence, I wished that tomorrow and the days ahead would continue to feel like paradise but I had my doubts. After our first night on the slopes of Kilimanjaro, some of us woke up more rested than others. Today, Thursday morning, first day of camping, Makame camp, 3,000 meter, great night of sleep, looking forward for another day of hiking. Gorgeous day, great sleep, great night, ready for another five hours of trekking out there. Hopefully no more rain like yesterday. I hope we get a better sleep last night, tomorrow night, <laughs> tonight. <laughs> it's freezing cold last night. I'm looking forward to today. But, uh, 
finally we ended up sleeping a bit. Uh, everyone's up. We're gonna have breakfast soon. And, and that's it, it's gonna be a beautiful day today. Hopefully we don't get no rain like yesterday. I'm looking forward to today's trek. I hope, um, I hope we uh, get there quickly. And I hope I'm not a baby about it. <laughs> <laughs> Selma was alluding to her tendency of throwing constant questions at the guides. How steep, how long, how difficult the terrain ahead would be. We were each given a small basin of hot water to wash up with. There would be no showers for the next six days. Not a great prospect when you're sharing a tiny pup tent. The porters had finished packing our gear and dismantling our tents. Some were already on the trail leading to our next camp, carrying everything we would need to live on for the rest of the week. What are we having for breakfast today? We're having uh, food and food We're and fruit. Papaya? So far, fruit, yeah, fruit, fruit. And We're having see, porridge. Oh, porridge. Porridge, uh, the mi, the mi, the mi, mi, something. And some bread, no. which is not here yet. No bread yet. We're going to get bread, that's for sure. Peanut Aye. butter, just peanut butter. And traditional... Uh, and hot sauce. Yeah, you can put that in oh, your porridge. Yeah. That's a good idea. And on my toast. I think it's going to be uphill. <laughs> you know what, if the sun is out, it's going to be better than yesterday. No matter how steep, if the sun is out, it'll be awesome. I have to say, this is the first time I've ever, I've ever camped. And was it a positive experience? Yeah, but you guys are supposed to go, whoa! <laughs> And this is the first go. time I've ever done anything outdoorsy without my mom. So that means no taking care of. Oh, well, I mean, no of pampering. course you guys are taking care of me, but like none of that whole getting my clothes ready in the morning and everything. Oh, really way to go, girl! Myself. Yeah, way to go. You don't like porridge? I hate porridge, <laughs> but I'm really like hungry, and this is all there is. Or anything, it's like. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey, morning, hey, everybody. Morning. How are you? Good. Good. Very good. <laughs> Monsieur Everest. How's the night? Are you still dreaming about home? Oh, uh, just dreaming about somebody who was nightmare, snoring so nightmare. loud. Nightmare. <laughs> Who's that? Well, I don't know, man. <laughs> you need to find out. <laughs> Maybe it's you. Uh, I don't know, man. He was kicking. He uh, was uh, 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 I know. Every five minutes I'm sleeping, I, I see the those. kick up. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you kicking? It's six, it's five, meant for five foot people, man. That tent is meant for people who are five feet. Considering most of us did not know each other well, I was happy to see that the group quickly gelled. Maybe because we had one thing in common. We were all very slow hikers and earned a nickname, the Poli Poli Group, from our guides. Poli in Swahili means slowly. Our slowness became our first line of defense against altitude sickness, as it gave our bodies plenty of time to adjust to the thinning air and oxygen. C'est ardu un petit peu pour commencer, mais c'est très faisable. Et euh, on est scindé en deux groupes. Il y en a cinq en avant, il y en a deux en arrière. Mais euh, ils vont sûrement nous rejoindre au lunch. Belle journée, pas de soleil. Euh, le soleil, pas de pluie. While it could be difficult to keep a larger group of people trekking at the same pace on Kilimanjaro, I thought that our small group of seven would be more manageable in that respect, and our chances of making it to the top together were good. Today is a bit more challenging, but challenging is my favorite word, so we're going to do it. <laughs> Kilimanjaro, hakuna matata. Na e hani wetu, hakuna matata. Na wageni wetu, hakuna matata. Karibu Kilimanjaro, hakuna matata. Tunaenda uhuru, hakuna matata. Na wageni wetu, hakuna matata. Watu wetu, hakuna matata. This is 
challenging. As we climbed an altitude, the forest began to recede. And as the air became thinner, so did the vegetation. With less oxygen, life forms become simpler. Every step upward made life simpler. Maybe that's what I was after, a slower and simpler life. And there are no high, tallest trees, just the uh, shortest trees. And the common of the trees which we have here is called Arica arborea trees. And also we see the different plants here. And also we have a lot of Spanish moss. Or sometimes we call the we call the old man beard. Old man beard. Yeah, because if the, the old man be old, just <laughs> look like this. You see? And uh, the old team is doing great until now. So we don't have any problems. Everyone is breathing well. Even the weather is good. It's very lovely. The climb was quite steep. So Yenin, Alan and Nabil slowed down to allow Salma, Karim and later William to catch up. We relished every break as it gave us the opportunity to fill up on carbohydrates and remain hydrated, two key success factors in high altitude. Back home, we rarely obsess with bodily functions like breathing, sleeping, eating, drinking, and keeping warm and safe from injury. In the wilderness, and in higher altitude, as the air thins and the temperature progressively drops, these are basic concerns that consume our minds from dawn to dusk and could mean the difference between pleasure and discomfort, or even pain. At least one worry we were spared was hauling our own gear. They're carrying the bags on their head as if it was like a, an empty basket of fruit. It's like it weighs probably 20 kilos per bag on their heads, my God, and we're complaining. Alan was right. Porters carried on average a load of 18 kilograms, about four times what each of us was carrying. Their job is not only demanding, but also dangerous. Several porters die on the mountain every year. A few from altitude sickness, but the majority from hypothermia caused by lack of proper clothing and footwear. <laughs> Death also strikes reckless trekkers. Over 10 fatal accidents on the mountain are reported every year. Many are related to altitude sickness and some simply due to accidental falls. Preventable for the most part. I'm not saying you're afraid of heights. Anything could happen here. <laughs> Selma's desire for posterity made her oblivious to a potential gust of wind or a slip of the foot that could have turned this light-hearted photo op into something tragic. After our break, William decided to pick up his pace to stay ahead of the group since he felt he was the slowest and did not want to keep the group waiting. But he was struggling. That's a good old son. What are you feeling? Huh? What are you feeling? He was already feeling the effect of the higher altitude. 
I couldn't help but wonder what William would tell his nine-year-old son if he becomes part of the statistical 40% who don't reach the top. I thought that his being overweight would mean a higher risk for a heart attack than altitude sickness. Just a moment ago, as William was struggling to catch his breath, his foot slipped going up a ridge. He would have fallen and hurt himself had it not been for Isaac grabbing his arm in the nick of time. So while Killy does not require technical mountaineering skills, it does demand concentration and constant vigilance. It was great to arrive at our camp for lunch. This was a much tougher climb than we had anticipated when we started out on this bright, clear sky morning. Lunch. <laughs> you look like you're hungry. I am. I saw that. Though. I'm very glad to be here. We were all relieved that William made it all the way here, safe and certainly sound. But this elation was short-lived. Clouds were rolling in and with them, the prospect of more rain, which would make the climb more slippery and difficult. Since Kili is located near the equator, there are only two seasons, a dry season and a wet season. The months of March to mid-June are considered the main rain season, while November to mid-December, the small rain season. We had had rain since we started, so for us, being drenched constantly from head to toe did not feel like small rain at all. Jumbo Jumbo! It means good morning or hello, but also serves as a general exhortation to keep moving. And we needed it, because the rugged terrain and the effect of the altitude were draining the group's energy and morale. So much so that we were missing the changing and stunning landscape. So I refocused my stance and made a conscious effort to take it all in yin and the yang, the small and the big, the narrow and the wide, the movement and the stillness, all of it. This unanticipated cascade takes its source from the rain and from the mountain tops melting ice cap, a not so subtle reminder of the effects of global warming. Kilimanjaro's ice cap is expected to be gone altogether by the year 2033. From solid to water to nothingness, such may be the fate of Kilimanjaro's ice cap. As the sun finally cut through the clouds, our spirits began to lift, but our concern for William remained. He was trailing behind, and Shira Camp was still more than a couple of hours away. You see something white here? This is, this is a soda bicarbonate. They can taste like a salt. And if you have the bad stomach, we use like a local medicine for treat the stomach. The mountain had more healing power than meets the untrained eye. Try to be concentrated with this.
I don't know what our guides meant when they said that the worst was behind us for today. It shows that everything is relative when it comes from guides who do over 30 summit expeditions per year and spend a total of almost 200 days on the mountain. We were certainly relieved that we all made it unharmed through this tight and abrupt rock formation. It was a long, wet, and draining second day for all of us. This is only day two, and we're not even past 4,000 meters. Yet, we were all already feeling the effects of the higher elevation. We're at 3,800 meters and we're at Chirac Cave and we're going to be sleeping at 3,750 tonight. It was a nice day, a couple of intricate rock climbing experience, but uh, we're going to make it. It's a smoother ride to camp. That's it. It was time to retire into the stillness of the night under the watchful eye and headlamp of one of our guides. Most of us did not eat much at dinner time. The altitude began to make its presence felt and shook our confidence in our ability to make it all the way to Africa's rooftop. So did you sleep well yesterday? Oh, like a baby. Apparently I even snored. Cried all night. And uh, had a couple of gravel pills and knocked me out. Very happy man this morning. I'm a happy camper. Is there somebody helping you? Yeah. Service is good here, eh? Really nice. Yesterday, on the way up, I was feeling great. It was a very difficult day, but it was still an awesome. I did very well, I, no problem. When I got into camp, did not feel as great. Nausea set in, and I was feeling awful last night. But today, you know, I'm doing good. With all the meds I've popped in my system, I, I'm doing reasonably good. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to another day towards our target. And hopefully we'll have a sunny walk up to 4,600 meters to the next campsite. And uh, things looking good. Last night was good for me. No complaints. I feel great. This is a perfect Kilimanjaro morning. And looking forward to climb the lava tower today. 4,600 meters. Here we come.
perfect vacation. So now we came from the Shira camp. We are on the way to Barranco camp. And everyone is doing okay. It's doing great. They are not afraid like yesterday. Yesterday it was it was a very high steep, but today it's a little bit steep. You have to lie to get us through. <laughs> so everyone is okay. And uh, also the weather is good. It's a beautiful morning. And we keep going. And this is like uh, 3,850 meters now. And we are going to pass the 4,600 meters. And then we go down to 3,950, which is Barranco Camp. What's the secret to make it to the summit? Uh, the secret is to stop thinking. Try to think like a baby all the time. And then the, the, the climbing is going to be very easy. And what are some of the symptoms that people feel when they're, they think they have altitude sickness? Yeah, the, the symptoms when the, the people f uh, feeling all the time is to get like, the headache. You know, when you are here in this camp, you are in the 3,750. Many people getting the light headache. So when they get the light headache, they worry too much. But to get the light headache, that is normal. There's no more situations here. When you take a little nap, the headache is going. But the big problems which people get here is the uh, pulmonary edema and uh, cerebral cerebral edema the cerebral it's happening in the brain people talking nonsense talk like a crazy but the pulmonary the lungs getting the the moistures so you can't breathing well you're breathing like a and then you get the bubbles in the, in the nose and the all treatment for these two uh, big problem up here is to descending, to go to the low altitude. That is the only treatment. No medicine, no anything, just to descending. Do you bring a lot of people down? Well, uh, in my group, not many, because I advising them well, and most of them, they reach the summit. No worries, Hakuna Matata. We are keep going. Today's goal was to gain 138 meters in altitude. While not much for a full day's work, it is crucial for acclimatization purposes. But in spite of the progressive climb into higher altitude, Salma was not doing well. Oh, I know. Oh, it's sparkling. I hope that my altitude is safe. Tell to tell, no? Just make sure you eat properly and drink lots of water. We had brought with us a finger oximeter, a small portable device that can quickly measure oxygen concentration in the blood as well as heart rate. Experts say that women are less likely to experience altitude sickness than men, but Kelly is unpredictable. The same person can be fine at a given altitude one time and severely ill another. You don't know until it hits you. Salma was feeling extremely weak. We were all wondering if she was up to the task of continuing or if she had already reached her summit. Everest pushed the rest of the team forward as he was anticipating more rain. Luck had it that my poncho ripped in half as I was putting it on. Getting wet and hypothermic is a deadly combination at high altitude.
Mitemi and Isaac tried to salvage the situation with tape that, happily, we carried with us. In the meantime, William, who had stayed back with Karim and Salma, was worried about the chest pains he was having. My puncture was pretty much fixed, and Karim told William that all seemed okay. Selma slowly gathered her energy, and the four of us, with relief, resumed our walk to catch up with the rest of the group. We have the chance to be to the top. We are, we are, we are. There's only a little bit left to go. Right, guys? We're over halfway. We're over halfway. That's right. There's no feeling here. Feeling good. Feeling good. We got a great team here. I was wondering for a while there, but I'm feeling good. But I had help. Ah, uh, here we are. We are on the way to the lava tower. We are 4,400 meters. It's uh, still a little bit higher. And we stop here for, for lunch. And after our lunch, we will keep going to pass to the lava tower and then go to Barranco. And when I look everyone here, it's look good. Everyone is look good, smile. Huh? I have a comment. If I make it up there, it's completely because of all the help that they've given and then all the help that we've given me too. <laughs> yeah, we are happy to hear that. And we'll make, we'll, make, we'll, we'll do our everything to make sure you reach the summit. If you can't walk, we'll take you to the back, to the rucksack, and then take you. <laughs> he lightened my backpack. <laughs> I have a nickname for you. What? MacGyver. MacGyver? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why MacGyver? Do you have everything? <laughs> <coughs> and in small quantities. <coughs> Salma, what do you think he has? <laughs> what does he have? Yeah. What he doesn't have. What does he, yeah, what does he not have? You need my cushion? Yeah. He has a walnut <laughs> uh, breaker. He has a cushion for his seat rest. What else? I have good friends that coach me well. How long do you yeah, I had a room downstairs in the basement. With two. <laughs> for at least six to eight weeks, I was starting to, okay, this is I'm bringing, this I'm not bringing, this, and I was eliminating stuff, and putting back things in, putting back things out. MacGyver, I like that one, but we got to have a nickname for everyone here. What did we come up with? Some, we, First we came up with something. First, First lady. First, First lady. lady. First lady. First lady, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Her Majesty. Yeah, first lady. And Yenin, the lighthouse. Hey, hey, our group name, G7. Yes, yeah, G7, yeah. Group 7. Group this sounds so political, the G7 met. Let's walk out of here, come on. Now that we were officially called the G7 Poli Poli, we began our short journey towards the lava tower. Now we are, we are 4,000, 
600 meters. We call the lava towers. And, and this they happen after the last volcanic. When the volcano erupts, the last they formed this uh, lava tower here. We feel so proud for the old team to be here. Yeah. It's amazing. It really is. The mountain seemed to be accepting everyone in the group. It's a good sign. And we're going back down to, uh, to camp lower to uh, readapt to this lack of oxygen. But uh, everything is okay for everyone. And we're, everyone is very proud of one another. So that's it. Lava Tower, we made it one good step forward. Thanks. We made it. I didn't think I'd make it this far. I'm so glad. I really think I can make it to the, Senate, the summit. It's a good experience. Highest point we're going to get to today. Now one was it should be downhill. Hopefully some, some, some rest bite on the way. But hanging in there, we'll, we'll, we'll make it. Well, it's an awesome sight. Awesome sight. Descending is just as treacherous as climbing. Staying focused on each step forward was important to minimize the risk of slipping and getting injured. If that were to happen, it would mean going back home, and no one in the group was ready for such a prospect. We had all worked so hard to get this far. Awesome. You've got hands there. Definitely. The best. We made it. We made it alive. Mm. Kibo, Kilimanjaro's highest peak. I stood there alone, in awe, fascinated by this old and mighty dormant volcano, and wondered if, after 200 years of silence, it would ever speak again. Almost nothing lives on Kibo, aside from some very tenacious species, like lichen. Nothing survives the altitude or the cold up there. And that's where we're all heading, where no birds fly and where almost nothing lives. We arrived at Barranco camp in late afternoon, totally exhausted. My town is very far away. I'm crying. Over dinner, we talked about the first of the major challenges facing us the next morning. 
climbing up the Barranco Wall. I wish you were we were apprehensive, especially if the rain persisted as it had over the last three days. Rain would make things slippery and potentially dangerous. To make matters worse, Nabil, Salma, and William were experiencing stomach problems and were quite weak physically. We all went to bed, hoping for a better day tomorrow. This is the beginning of our fourth day on Kilimanjaro. Many of us did not sleep well as we anticipated today's challenge, the Great Barranco Wall. a rigorous near-vertical 270-meter climb, one of the harder spots on the Machame route. Mtemi was never too far from me. Carrying my three kilogram camera whenever I was not using it, which made my climb into a high altitude and through sometimes tricky terrain much easier. The view was already spectacular with these senecios standing guard on the wall. They grow to an amazing six meters on this oxygen-deprived elevation. Other groups of climbers that we had not yet encountered we're also attempting the Barranco Wall. It was a challenge for most, and a lesson in humility to watch the porters negotiate the narrow, rocky path with the weight they were carrying. Jumbo. Jumbo. It was awesome. Much. Battled my fears. Oh, you're afraid of heights? heights? Oh, I like that. How was it for you? <laughs> Treacherous. You it. Fortunately, yeah? Isaac was there to help me. Very good. Oh, you did it. You did a, did a good fight. Yeah. Very emotional. We inched our way up cautiously. Our drenched boots from the rain of the day before made the climb much more difficult and all the more unpleasant. What added to the frustration was the way the wall seemed to never end. Every time we thought we had arrived at the top, there was more wall to climb. These false summits began to sap our spirits. William was at his wit's end, trying to muster the little strength he had left to make it to the top of the wall. We waited for him as he struggled to catch his breath and gather his courage to continue. Yeah, you have to be moving. You're not yeah. moving, you're cold. 
Yeah, there's yeah, because all the sweat sort yeah, of, yeah. you know, yeah. fits in there. <sighs> Whenever we saw a team member struggle, it made us doubt our ability to summit as a team, if at all. Today's Karanga, then Barafu, and then Summit. Akuna Kulala! We are now minutes away from the top of the Barranco wall. And as if to cheer us on, this porter cranks up the volume of his radio. That's the Kili spirit. It took the group almost three hours to finally make it to the top of the Barranco wall. And we all sighed with relief when we saw William champ, come in with Metemi. Yeah. It wasn't an easy one, was it? What did all I'm letting the team down. I'm letting the team down. That wall broke William's spirit. He started doubting his ability to keep up with the team and to make it to the summit, which was still two full days away and into even thinner air. The rest of the group was a fairly good task. Speaking for me, I had to conquer the height fear and I'm very emotional. And, uh, was that the first time you did something as high? Yes. You never been on a high altitude like that, never. climbing with your hands. And never. How did you feel going up? Scared. <laughs> Cried. And, uh, I was doing this for myself first, and for everyone around me and my family. Yeah, we are all feeling good, and we we are all happy because everybody made it to the Barranco wall, and now we are on top of the Barranco wall. It's 4,200 meters. From here now we get a little bit down. And after going down, they'll be up, then down to Karanga Valley, then up the camp. Heading to slightly lower elevation towards the Karanga Valley was a psychological lift for all of us. Like advancing towards an oasis in the middle of a desert. We had gotten to know the mountain a little better by now. And in the process, perhaps ourselves. In spite of our trials and tribulations, we were still standing, and Uhuru Peak still seemed possible. <laughs> this is a beautiful morning. We woke up with a little bit sun, and we woke up from the Karanga camp, and now we are on the way to Barafu camp. Barafu means ice, so we are expecting to see ice up there. <laughs> Rafu Camp would be our last stop before we attempt the summit late tonight. Uhuru, here we come. Today 
today we're going to base camp it's gonna be 4600 meters and at the midnight going to Huru Peak it's gonna be 58 and 95 meters but we have only one chance we hope and believe we'll use our advantage and we'll use our one chance to get to the top. That's it. But first, we had to cross the Karanga Valley, which our guides described as narrow, steep, and spectacular. Nabil had been complaining of a stomach ache and nausea since we left camp this morning, and things were not getting any better for him. As part of the group was pushing ahead with Everest, William was straggling behind with labored breathing and blistered feet. Karim decided to slow down so that William could catch up to him. The group reunited less than an hour later for a short break. Nabil's morale hit a low point as his nausea was not letting up. I'm feeling better. I had a hard start and uh, I'm actually feeling better. I have a headache. Mm -hmm. I have a, a medium headache. I wouldn't say it's too strong, but it's definitely not mild. Um, I can catch my breath after that packing I did. And I started that way. The migraine was coming up. Uh, I think it succeeded my expectations in terms of challenges. I didn't think it would be this difficult. It has definitely exceeded my expectations. Uh, considering it was supposed to be for a novice climber, an experienced climber, and in some places you had to hold your breath to climb up there. I asked Isaac no, no, if I can I take Advils. He said, if you can not take them for the moment, run it off. And I did that, and that migraine went away. The other days it was about the different terrains and and what have you, but today's Definitely the, the big challenge for me today is the altitude. Uh, I tend to be dreaming, breathing deep and uh, trying to catch my breath quite often. But then if I rest for a little while, a couple of minutes, I, I get over it. So, so if I was training to go, then I would probably hit the treadmill a lot harder than I did. I remember uh, a mountaineering guy who had given me a lot of advice had called this the tourist mountain. I'm going back and telling him it's no tourist mountain. <laughs> Feel good now? Feel better. You gonna listen to some music? Yeah. From back home? From back home. Music my daughter put on the iPod for me. Can you dance for us? <laughs> that's about it. I'm trying to think positive. That's I think that's that's what's gonna get us there. <laughs> all contending with physical problems or the emotional strain, and often both. We just had to dig deep within to renew our resolve, that of reaching Achilles' summit. One small step at a time, not 
nothing more, nothing less. This was the last time we would see birds soaring in the sky. Tomorrow, we would go where no birds fly, where no animals venture, a place devoid of life. Tomorrow is our ultimate test, finding out what we are made of and whether a little luck would come our way to defy the odds of altitude sickness. This is the last stop before the summit, before uh, reaching Uhuru Peak. We leave tonight at 11 uh, p.m. After having a small uh, breakfast, we, we leave uh, for the peak, it's expected to take approximately eight to nine hours to get to Huru Peak. Uh, we'll stay there about 15, 20 minutes, an hour or so, and head back down to Barafu Camp where we are right now. We'll make it. I'm, I'm positively thinking that. It's like feeling overwhelmed. This is a moment that I've been thinking about for about 10 years coming to on this trek and actually making it this far to the point that tonight is the night we're going to be going to the dream that I've had for 10 years. I know it'll be a, <coughs> a hard task, but uh, my mind is set to it and I've got all the support I need from my people around here and from my family at home. Words cannot describe it. The fact that I'm still standing and still doing reasonably well, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled not only myself, but I'm thrilled that the whole team is doing as well as they are doing. We'll see tomorrow. And the experience that we are all sharing together, experience I personally have had so far in the last four or five days and I'm about to have in, in the next 24 hours, I, I, words cannot describe what we're going to experience, good, bad, but we're going to focus on just the good, just reaching our goal. I'm, I'm just thrilled. Tomorrow will be probably the cold and grasping for air. <coughs> if I'm sick, I'm sick. I'm not going to make a big thing out of it. Challenge tomorrow is making it to the top. I've been sharing my tent uh, with uh, Yanane here otherwise known as Yenin, who's taking a little rest. He's, he's had a tough uh, couple of days, you know, so he's, he's, he needs his little beauty rest. And uh, being happy about myself and being happy about what I've accomplished. Relaxing, gathering some energy, getting ready for, for, for the long, time, long night we're gonna have. It's around 11 p.m. We discussed our summit strategy, but did not arrive at a consensus. 
Some of us wanted the slowest team members to lead the way to ensure that we all make it to the summit together. Others felt that this would jeopardize the success of the entire group. So we left it open and hoped for the best. William and Nabil were still feeling weak and experiencing stomach problems. They hesitated about whether they should even attempt the summit. But on, we all went. Trekking Kili at night is one of the most challenging things I've ever experienced in my life. The icy gusts of wind whipped my face relentlessly. And in spite of the five layers of clothing I was wrapped in, I was shivering. The temperature is close to minus 15 degrees centigrade. We are nearing 5,000 meters of altitude and the oxygen in the air is almost half that at sea level. Each one of us has been assigned a guide whose job will be to encourage us to make it to Uhuru Peak or bring us down safely if need be. Mine is Metemi, who has been with me since we set foot on the mountain. Despite his presence, I'm alone with my thoughts, my fatigue, a headache, and nausea. I pray to not get sick, as it would break the slow pace I have mustered so far. Some of my team members were behind me, and some ahead. I could hear the faint sound of the other trekkers gagging and sobbing from nausea and sheer exhaustion. It's about 3 a.m. I have nausea and my footing is wobbly and unsteady. Meteme senses my struggle. I'm about to give up when I see him step in front of me. Without a word, he lifted his right foot and placed it deliberately, slowly, in front of the other to guide me into a steadier rhythm. I mirror what he does. Slowly, I get back into a comfortable stride. I feel stronger and I break into a sob from fatigue and from thinking of my two children and how we normally encourage our kids by pushing them hard and by cheering them on, Metemis' silent compassion and guidance touched me, and I will remain forever thankful for this moment of grace. As I regained my pace, I noticed in the distance the headlights of my teammates. That also gave me the sense that I was no longer alone. With the break of day, the fear of not making the summit melted away. I felt a surge of energy and optimism. Funny how life's struggles often seem daunting in the thick of night. And then there is daybreak. And with it, pessimism gives place to hope and renewal. Strong man! Let's go, let's go. We are almost there. Almost there. Keep going. Go, 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 go. Tammy. 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 Tammy, I'm dying here. Come on, yeah. Come on. Yeah. We're almost there, guys. Yeah. We're almost there. I'm sleepy. We're almost there. Come on. One step and take a break whenever you you feel it, okay? Yeah. Okay, you're strong, man. 
Yeah. You don't sound good to me. Do you want to sit down a little bit? They don't want me to sit down. No, no, I think we should sit down a little bit. I'm I think okay. he should, I think he needs to sit a little bit. Okay? They don't want me to sit down. No, no, sit down. He needs to sit down. Okay, okay. Okay? okay. Sit down a little bit. Everest? Alain is going to sit down a few minutes, okay? Yeah. Oh, thank you. What do we need? Just follow me. <coughs> we go together with Salma. Pull it, pull it. Just gorgeous. minutes from Stella Point, the second highest point in Africa. Almost there. Come on. Come on, guys. Let's go. <laughs> the group was now dispersed. Karim, Nabil, and Yenin were ahead. And while Alan was struggling to stay upright, William was a good 10 minutes behind us and fighting the mountain. As we neared the summit, breathing became difficult and heavy. I was concerned for both Alan and William and thought that perhaps they had already gone as far and as high as they could. The barren landscape was inhospitable, but spectacular. While I wanted to capture the rest of our journey, the weight of the camera was taking its toll on me. But I knew this was no time to quit. This mountain almost broke me. This man here didn't give me any option to quit. It was dark. I was trying to hold in a washroom problem. My fingers were frozen. I was starving. And it was dark. And I knew there was hours left. And I heard, what's the point? And I was almost out of water. I drank half my water within two hours. It's probably almost gone now. So he just kept me going. When it started to get light, it started to feel better. Man, I hate this mountain. Stella Point, we were less than 200 meters away from the summit. But at our current pace, it could take us over an hour. We had been trekking now for over nine hours straight. 
Many people turn around and start their descent from Stella Point, but we pushed ahead. Our group has split in three. Karim, Yenin, and Nabil were leading, followed by Salma and Alan. I got my second wind and stayed with William, hoping to catch up with the rest of the team at the summit. William and I caught up with the rest of the group as they were descending from the summit. How are you doing? He's made it. Yeah. That's what's important. You keep telling me another hundred meters. Yeah, it's, it's right there. It's right there. They had waited almost an hour for us to get there, but they had to descend as it was not advisable to stay any longer. Salma was feeling extremely lethargic and had to be brought down at once. You did great, man. I cried. I'd like to say on behalf of the Poly Poly G7 team, as to how great all of you have been, I cannot single out any one of you, all of you. Isaac, mm -hmm. Everest, all you porters have done a fantastic job to help all of us get up to us. It was a dream for all of us. Words cannot describe how we all feel today. I think I speak on behalf of everyone. Asante Sana. Thank you. Very much.
I didn't think I'd make it the way the day started. It feels so good to be here. And so it was. We all had a brief glimpse of that place which is impossible for the bird. William and I made it down and joined the group at base camp a few hours later. While disappointed that we were unable to summit as a group, we rejoiced in the knowledge that we had made it all the way up and down safely. Even if our heads were in the clouds, we were not dreaming. We had actually summited the world's tallest freestanding mountain and Africa's highest. And we all left the mountain with what we came for. Salma, a renewed spiritual experience. Nabil, another adventure that, luckily, did not involve an oxygen tank. Karim, a 10-year dream that came true. Yenin, being able to say, I'm from Tanzania, and yes, I climbed Kilimanjaro. Alan, overcoming his fear of heights on one of the world's highest mountains. William, a story of determination for his nine-year-old son. And me, a midlife adventure captured on film for those who dare to stay young at heart. For the seven of us, this was an unforgettable experience. Climbing Kilimanjaro was not just about making it to the summit, but also about achieving the seemingly unattainable watching the stars and dreaming the dream, whatever it may be. So far so good. Oxygen? Um, no, so far so good. Deepness? No. So far, doing great. Hey, honey, my athlete. Your camera. You're always one Girl. step up in the front of us. Counting minute by minute, second by second, I will always be there. To the top! To the top! Superman, Superman, Steven Spielberg. And first lady, Selma, look how beautiful she is. She's smiling. A AKA She's monkey. smiling after going up the Barranco Wall. How can you be smiling like this? Patience with us, you know? He's like a father, but very young. He looks this like Eddie Murphy, doesn't he? This is my little brother. Eddie Murphy. Look at, look at the glasses. He looks really macho, huh? Too bad there are not too many women here. <laughs> Except Selma, we've got to keep keeping an eye on her. That's my cousin, Biro. Biro came from far. I've known him for... 72 years. Look at him. He's 85, but he's looking good. <laughs> I'm sharing my tent with him, which is good, which is good. But you need to know something. There is nothing that he did not bring. <laughs> nothing. I mean, I need an extra pair of underwear. He's got it. All that in 50, 50 kilograms. Nail polish. No, no, he's got it. You know what? When you come to Kilimanjaro, everything is tested. Yeah. Patience, discipline, Focus, courage, teamwork. You want me to go on? <laughs> you can Sleeping stop. with somebody you don't know. <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> See, Isaac has done great with us. He's also been patient. He's our second father. Because one father, you know, is not enough. We have two fathers. And between the two, we don't know what to do. That's it for today. All right. 
Okay. No, no, you know what? Just stay on me. Don't, don't go like this. Okay, okay. Just stay on me because after I'm gonna do it. Okay, okay. Okay, we start again. Oh. Now you're filming. Now you're okay. You okay? Stay like this. So here I am. Leave it. Don't, don't touch it. Okay, good like that. Okay. Don't touch it again. So here I am at the top of Kilimanjaro, Africa's rooftop, as they say. It was an, just an undescribable adventure. Nashing and a man is in a way. Ningakua, Mama Laika. Eva Kidege Kukuasa Kidege. Thank you very much, and also we say we believe you will you're going to be a, a good ambassador when you back to your country, and then we hope you're going to tell everyone what you see here and what you enjoy here, and we, we hope to see your friends, your family. So we say thank you very much. You are so charming to us, guys, and you are real close friends to us. So we say thank you. Yeah, that's why, my mother.